Amazing decks and gazebos are a great way to really make your yard look cool. So who's got the skills to treat the best? If I wasn't good, I wouldn't be here. We'll find out as three top deck builders go head to head. I have twice the experience I have. The challenge, build a jaw-dropping gazebo, each one with a specific theme, in just six hours. Gotta hustle, hustle, hustle. Expectations are high. Oh, man, I'm getting, getting stressed. And the judging is tough. Hey, look at what I'm looking at. Because only the best can take home $10,000 and the title DIY Dominator. Let's do this. Second place isn't an option. I got this in the bag. Hey, I'm Chris Grundy. In the next half hour, you're going to see three incredibly talented deck builders give it their all. Because when the clock runs out, the one with the coolest looking gazebo wins $10,000. Let's meet our competitors now. I'm Robin Lopez from Orlando, Florida. I used to be a rocket scientist, now I'm a carpenter. I was an aerospace engineer working on top secret projects, and all I did was stare at a computer screen all day long. I realized how much I miss the outdoors. In 2004, three hurricanes came through Central Florida. That was the opportunity that I needed to, to take the jump uh, because there was a, a surplus of work that needed to be done. Our niche is the outdoor realm, so we do a lot of decks and uh, quite a few gazebos as well. If I win the $10,000 today, the money will go towards the kids' education, not for a rainy day for mom and dad, for the kids. My name is Mike Howell, I'm from Elgin, Illinois, and I have 20 years experience as a carpenter. I think I have a real good eye for detail. I can see proportion uh, and aesthetics really well. I have a good understanding of the way things should look. We do a lot of historic renovation, and I love that type of work. It's very detail-oriented, and it just takes a lot of patience and time to do it right. As a carpenter, I know what it takes to get stuff done on time, but today's challenge, building this gazebo in six hours, that's a real challenge. I'm Andrew York. I'm from San Diego, California. I'm 27 years old, and I've been building things my whole life. I can't imagine there's anyone that would love to build stuff more than I do. I do it all the time. I think about it all the time. I dream about it at night. It's just it's what I do. If I win that $10,000, that would be wonderful. My wife is four months pregnant, and we'd love to put that towards a down payment on the house. These guys face a tough challenge today. We asked them to design and build a gazebo. That's kind of like an open air summer house or pavilion. It has to include seating for four, a roof, and railings on two sides. We gave them a full day for pre-cuts and other prep work. And today, they've got just six hours with an assistant to get the entire job done. So competitors, I hope you're ready, because the clock starts now. Let's go, let's do this. We're going to be winners today, and then we're going to set the other one on far outside over there. The gazebo I'm building today is a Japanese sort of style gazebo with some arts and crafts influence. The roof is a timber framed roof, and it has sort of a, an open slat roofing style, so it's open and airy, yet it's covered from the weather as well. I've chosen some really nice material today. I've got some number one grade dug fur for my beams, my posts, and my roof structure. Check our depth here. And we've added some redwood elements. Uh, with the bench and a very sort of arts and crafts redwood railing style that I think is going to be really sharp. Do you want to mark these two? I'm building a tropical gazebo. It's square, but it has a solid roof. It's going to be a white structure. A main point of my gazebo is going to be the decking and the bench, which I'm going to use Brazilian redwood. And at the end, I'm going to oil it, and it's really going to make that wood stand out. The railing on my gazebo is going to be a diamond pattern, which I see in a lot of tropical gazebos. I wanted to create something that's kind of more open so that people can actually get in and use it. So it's going to be an octagon. The project I'm building might be so far outside the box that you can't even see the box anymore. We'll start out with six by six posts that are ripped on a diagonal down the middle. All three posts are set at a 22 and a half degree angle outwards. They're suspended cables that are going to actually suspend the roof, which is a, a wood frame and it has a metal basket weave over the top of that. My design is probably going to be the most outlandish, and the judges are either going to love me or they're going to hate me. Well, here's how it works. Points are awarded for creative design, technical difficulty, quality workmanship, and of course, safe work habits. Here are the judges making those calls. Landscape architect Courtney McRecord, 
custom home builder Ari LaRoz, and Sean Miller, president of the North American Deck and Railing Association. First up, each competitor has to frame his gazebo and lay down the deck. Let's get a mark on each one of those guys. Mike starts by fitting lap joints for his walls. Mike's working on a timber frame design, everything cut together and joined in. Kind of tight. It takes a little more precision to do that type of work. We're going to push it up and walk it back, right? In just 20 minutes, he's got a wall up, but no floor yet. Robin's automatic feed screw gun helps his decking go down fast. You can just set it and go. It's an incredible time saver. But his assistant is left struggling with the metal basket weave roof. I don't know if he's going to have to go back and do something different because it's really um, not looking as taut and finished as it should be. So I got a question for you. How come the assistant's doing all the hard work? He hasn't ever used a screw gun. Oh, it's a great drill, but anybody can use it. Andrew is making good progress on his frame and flooring, but the judges have noticed a problem. Uh, look at his ends. I don't like that. They're not talking to me, but I can hear them saying that they don't like it. Turns out, one edge is uneven. Hey, Andrew, did your material come in wrong? Some of it was short. A little bit too short? Bummer. He can trim them back, but the frame will show. We got any ideas? Do a border. We'll see if there's time and material. I'm thinking, come on, guys, I've got six hours to finish this, and you're going to complain about that in the first 30 minutes. <sighs> Coming up, speed challenge. Go! A win here gives one competitor a huge advantage. I didn't come out here to take second place. Okay. An hour in, the gazebos begin to take shape. All right, those are going to go right here. They're going to hang between here. To make the post for his roof, Robin's trying to cut a 6x6 six six beam on the diagonal. I started with a sawzall, and it is forever painfully long to do that. What's going on with this? I can't get the sawzall is not being cooperative this morning. So what's plan B? Plan B is a chainsaw. Chainsaw was just chewing up the wood, something fierce. So it's back to the sawzall for about an hour. I mean, it's taking a long time. I agree with you. Does it look like they know what they're doing? Mike's routing matching raptor tails for his floor and roof joists. This is called easing the edge here. Just kind of clean it up a little bit. He's got some really nice detailing, very precise and linear. Great craftsmanship, but is it on the level? So Ari comes by, and he's uh, challenging me on getting it leveled up. Hey, look at what I'm looking at. Yeah, I can see it's got to go that way a little bit. Floor was out of level. Right. So when I lifted this up, it pushed this this way. Jeez. So now I got to make a minor correction here before I get started on the roof. Meanwhile, Andrew is starting to frame the roof on his tropical gazebo. He's using notched cuts called bird's mouths to connect the rafters and joists. I just think it's so simple. He's got tin corbel cuts. Other than that, everything is square cut, easy. It's a very simple design, but there's actually complex cuts. His double bird's mouths, they're all pretty tight. Using a template, Mike marks a series of notches on his rafters. He makes one set of cuts with a circular saw set on an angle, and later comes back with a jigsaw. That's a pretty long jigsaw blade. Jigsaw blade. blade. Got to get through three and a half inches. Pretty good. I like that. After cleaning the cuts with a chisel, boom! He connects the scissor rafters like pieces of a puzzle. I love the timber framing that we're seeing. This style of construction you don't see much anymore. No. And this is a little bit of a lost art. It's a true craftsman. Robin finally gets his helper to finish the problem beam cut. Joyous moment. It's done, but it's not smooth. We're going for the rough cut look all of a sudden. So we'll clean it up a little bit, but hey, at least we got something to hang from now. 
Meanwhile, Andrew finds the time to fix a problem the judges had with his uneven deck edges. To fix the problem, we ended up cutting both sides a quarter inch down. The judges were complaining, so I figured I had to shut them up somehow. Is that better? Yes. That is a good move. Thank you. Now he can quickly lay out his patterned railing before I call a timeout. All right, everybody. We're three hours in, that's halfway through the build. That means it's time for the Cobalt Tool Speed Challenge. For this challenge, you'll be using a cobalt hammer and saw to create a gazebo or deck railing. You've got to measure and cut balusters, nail them into the base, and finish by nailing on the top plate and adding caps to the side posts. The winner of this round gets to take all three assistants for 15 minutes. Everybody understand? Cool. Ready? Go! First thing is to measure those two by twos. These guys are not used to using hand saws anymore. They haven't used a hand saw since grade school, <laughs> right? Look at this. Mike and Andrew are under their second and final cut at nearly the same time. Rob is trying to cut on the ground. He can't get any leverage. Mike is pulling ahead, already nailing the pickets to his top plate, while Andrew is still up on the sawhorse setting his nails. And Robin, still struggling. We got nailing going on, and he's still cutting. Mike's going back to pull a nail. Oh, he just Jeez. broke one. I'm done, man. I'm done. Mike's going to go ahead and finish with three pickets. Look at Andrew. He's ahead. He's got four rails. Mike's only got three. These guys are almost done while Robin's just started his layout. Oh, my Lord. Even with the break, Mike is pushing on. Is he done? He knows it's not right. He's coming back. He's going to see if he can salvage his rail. Well, while Mike is fixing, Andrew is taking the lead. And Rob is still on the ground nailing. Ah, oh, there goes the cap on Andrew's. He's done. Andrew, you're the winner. You get all the assistance for the next 15 minutes. All right, everybody, that's it. Let's get back to work. Dennis, right? Yeah. Drew. Hey, Drew. By winning the Cobalt Challenge, Andrew has all three assistants for 15 minutes. So there's still a lot to do. The extra help allows him to finish the railing, the roof sheeting, and the diagonal braces, while Robin and Mike gut it out alone. All right, Andrew, your 15 minutes of help is up. Assistants, go back to your original competitors. Back to a level playing field, Robin starts to put up his roof supports. So, Robin, I did have one question for you. You've got a lot of outward force. Correct. And we're working on a miter joint here with just some toenails. Are you worried about that coming apart at all? That end result is actually going to be an inward force. The top's going to pull in, but it's going to force your bottom out. Did the stress analysis, said it would work. But there's real life, and there's computer. Yeah, I hope he is a NASA engineer, because I think his thing is not going to work at all. Three legs, some cable, and some tin? No way. Hey, we're, we're ready to do these roof slats, okay. okay? With two hours left, Mike starts to place the one by six slats on his rafters to create a louvered roof. Yeah, the roof slats are going. His is the only one that is open. The rest of them have completely closed off roofs. Cool look, but is it functional? I have a few problems with his. The roof is a little bit too high. The scale is not quite right. What do you do when it rains? Andrew has now moved on to his benches, screwing in the boards, while his assistant lays shingles on the roof. But they have to improvise when supplies run short. Well, have enough? Uh, yeah, hope so. You see that? Because we were short, we couldn't keep the pattern consistent. So he was staggered at first, and then he ran his seam straight. So Ari pointed it out to me like it was the end of the world. Andrew just ran out of shingles. That's a big deal. What does he want me to do? I mean, I can't go pick up more, so just using what we had. Prior planning prevents piss poor performance. With his post up, Robin's ready to hang his roof. I know a lot of the judges were mumbling in the background. This is not going to work. 
To make sure it's safe, Robin gets five helpers for five minutes as he struggles to secure it. No one breathes for the next one hour, 17 minutes. <laughs> and now he's got to slowly crank it up. Happy that the roof is up. Big sigh of relief. A success? That depends. Strong win? You know, I wouldn't be under there. We got an hour left. But I got a lot to do. As the balusters go up on the railing, Mike notices a problem. This one's wrong. The spacing on the rails wasn't correct. 13.5. So we had to recheck our math and, and tighten it up a little bit. Then as he preps the last balusters, I'm cleaning it up with the router, and I catch some grain and just snap my piece totally in half. We had a little accident there with the router. It's called tear out. Thankfully, I have another piece. What do you think, Mike? Oh, man, I'm getting, getting stressed. In the last half hour, Andrew Staines is Brazilian Redwood. 25 minutes left, I think I'll finish. Mike is rushing to finish his bench. Robin is just hoping to stay in the running. You gonna make it on your benches? Oh, I'll have benches. I won't have backs on them, I don't think. But we're trying. As the clock ticks down, one minute left! Oh. One minute! It's a mad yeah. scramble. Mike has no time to stain, and Robin has just moved to damage control. Three, two, one! Time is up! Put your tools down! Oh. like the rip, huh? next time for the judges to make their call is it too simple i'm feeling very anxious wow i have a chance to win this the winner of ten thousand dollars which one would i want in my backyard after six hours our competitors have built three very different gazebos there's mike's japanese and prairie style design andrew's tropical style with brazilian redwood and Robin's modern gazebo that he has struggled with all day. Time to hear from the judges. First up, Mike. When I look at all the attention to detail, uh, from the bench legs being curved, all the timber frame construction, I just really think this one shines. Mike had an amazing design. He had so much complexity. I would have liked to have seen more finish in his staining, and the seating just really bothered me. I feel like the linear seating isn't quite as intimate and, and natural. I loved your detail so much around the perimeter. If it would have been on one more side, I would have been psyched. Next up, Andrew. He just has such a great completed package. I think he really laid it out well. There's not a lot of detail here. I wish you'd have pushed it just a little bit further. I, it seems, to me, it was almost too simple. I look at it and I say, which one would I want in my backyard? I made it super functional, still with enough flair for me to like. <laughs> Thanks, guys. And finally, Robin. You know, there's something to be said to kind of break out of the box and try something different. And then there's a whole other side of things to do something out of the box that doesn't work. You know, you really tried to hit it out of the park with uh, a crazy idea. I think you were struggling pretty hard. And I think at the end of the day, this structure would fall apart. You worked on hurricane relief. This thing, how long do you think this thing will last in the wind? Not long. What a day. The judges really struggled over this one, but made their decision. So here it is. The winner of $10,000 and the title of DIY Dominator goes to Andrew York! Nice job! Nice job! I can hardly believe it. It's just now hitting me. I won $10,000, and it couldn't have come at a better time. My wife is four months pregnant with a boy. We're hoping to put it towards a down payment on the house. Totally disappointed, you know, fell short a little bit. I feel so bad for Mike. He did such a great job. I think what killed him was functionality. Unfortunately, I, I took on a little bit too much. Building a gazebo is not rocket science. 